Good evening to all of you. There are a lot of talks about David and Goliath. It is a, again a David and Goliath story, and with all due respects, I have been positioned against a big giant like Dr. S. R. Irwin. But my story is a little bit different because I am talking about Karan and Arjun, and my Arjun is with dharma, and my Arjun is basically with religion, with truth, and robustness. And when I show the slide, and again talking about the pentad and plus three, that is weight, diet, and sense, I picture out what Arjun showed to, what actually Krishna showed to Arjun, that Vishwasarupam. This molecule is becoming like a Vishwasarupam. There are a lot many things every day which is coming up as a positive factor. And this is, mind you, it's not a Bollywood story of Karan Arjun, ki mere Karan Arjun ka it is definitely not an emotional story. I am talking about evidence. I am talking about rationality. So, yeah. this ADA ESD position statement is, has position DP before. Again, it is safe. It, it has got intermediate efficacy. Okay, it, is, it has got intermediate efficacy. Hypoglycemia, low risk. Again, weight against neutral and side effects are rare cost, the blah blah issue about cost. Mind you, when five years back, when I used to prescribe this DPP-4 inhibitor, there was again an issue in the back of mind about cost. But now I will, I will say, majority of the times, if I will ask you, you will say that majority of the times, you people are using DPP-4 inhibitors in your practice. And this is, again, it's not, it is something which doesn't need any kind of consensus. So, Let's see, gliptins versus sulfonylurea with relative to fasting blood sugar. This non-inferiority data has been shown a number of times, and it is non-inferior to any of the drugs like sulfonylurea with respect to fasting and postprandial control. And HbA1c definitely we know, and I'll be showing the data for HbA1c in the subsequent slides. So again, with postprandial, we know about this. It is something which is very positive with respect to insulin resistance. And uh, again, the GLP concept, we all know ki it is something where DPP-4 inhibitors score over sulfonylurea. And again, see the insulin ratio and the HOMA IR, it, the kind of response is there. It, it is not debatable. Gliptin versus sulfonylurea with respect to HbA1c. Again, sir talked about uh, the fast sprinter and the marathon runner. I will say my molecule is not a fast sprinter. It, I'm not talking about Usain Bolt. I'm talking about a marathon runner because my molecule acts slowly. It is something which has stood the test of time when the era of systemic control trials, when the era evidence-based trial has come. In the last nine years, it could not be dented and it is, could not be withdrawn. It is still standing the test of time. So see the error, and it is a marathon runner, and add-on to metformin, cetagliptin was non-inferior to sulfonylurea. I will not talk a lot about this because it has been shown so many times in the same platform. So gliptin versus sulfonylurea, what about hypoglycemia? Sir talked about, again, the same fast sprinter and a marathon runner. I will say, I will use it the vice versa. Because the advanced data has clearly shown if you go for a stricter glycemic control, there are chances of severe hypoglycemia and the mortality, the blah, blah thing. I need not go in detail for it because we all know it. And apart from this, the advanced and adopt data has clearly shown us the wisdom of it. So we need to have a marathon runner who should not pant fast, who should not run fast, but should win the race should complete the race and with a, a kind of something with less of complications. So my molecule is not a fast sprinter, is a marathon runner, which has actually won so many races and will be winning it in the future also. So cetagliptin was associated with a lower risk of hypoglycemia compared with glipizide. See the data, it is, I will not go because it is again a very picturesque data with respect to the person below 65 years, and especially the special class, because India will, again, right now, India is a country of youth. 
some 10 years or 15 years or 20 years down from now, 30 years down from now, again we'll have, again, we'll have a big chunk of elderly population when the economy will grow. Again, we, we need to have a safe molecule. So hypoglycemic events, again, glimepiride versus cetagliptin, nothing, nothing, nothing comparable with respect to this. See the forest chart, everything, everything is below one with favoring cetagliptin. So this is something which is there and it is statistically significant also. C effects of cetagliptin and glimepiride on hypoglycemia when you see the major events, see seven, seven episodes and 22 episodes, can you compare it? Can you compare it when you're talking about in the era, there was a beautiful story. In our city of Bhopal, there was a new showroom of Audi came and all of a sudden people started saying, Ki, Ar, Doc sahab, Audi kaun kharidega? Kaise khol liya asne? And mind you, within 10 year, within 10 to 15 months of opening the showroom, that when I met that uh, person selling Audi, he said, Ki, I've, I've sold round about 30 to 40 Audis in the city, and which is, which is comparable, as comparable to any of the good cities. So quality of life, economy, and the power of purchase, and going towards the better aspect of things is increasing. I'm not saying Ki Maruti 800 was not bad. It was, it was also very good, but, the era of Audi is coming, the era of Mercedes is coming, the era of Mercedes-Benz is coming, and we are getting crazy about Mercedes. So, gliptins versus sulfonylurea, again with respect to weight gain, gliptins added to metformin have favorable effects on body weight compared to sulfonylurea, did not to uh, go in detail, uh, it is established fact, and the difference is almost somewhere around about 2.3 kg. Viltagliptin plus metformin, again showing with less of hypoglycemia, no weight gain, and Diabetes mellitus in the young, gliptins also based on Indian data, lesser treatment failures and less weight gain. This is something it is clearly showing, lesser treatment failures and less weight gain. And with respect to CV outcome, now we need to know the CV outcome. Mortality and cardiovascular risk with different secret of GOGs. This is, I mind you, I'm again showing the same slide which Sir has shown, but with again the flip side. Please see the flip side of it. UGDP, we said it was not properly designed. Then there are a lot of studies which are again telling us the same story. We need to have a marathon runner which should bring down the HbA1c to a respectable level, acceptable level as per the patient-centered approach he talked of, but no hypoglycemia, less weight gain and poor, good CV outcome. So DPV4 inhibitors, the major adverse cardiovascular events, again, the forest chart is clearly showing very, gross difference when we, you see the both previous one and the, this one. So need not go in detail. Again, we have completed alloglyptin. Again, we have completed examine. We have completed SEVOR. We know there are some issues which are pending, but we should wait for TECOS. And uh, yesterday only I saw some of the few preliminary slides and the data was very encouraging. So different populations, Again, there were issues like, uh, which ma'am, Dr. Deshpande has told us, so I will not go in detail, regarding the patients who are having high pre-BNP levels. And so, are there any issues of pancreatitis or pancreas cancer? I am going towards the flip side now. Meta-analysis, again, on the clinical trials has clearly shown no evidence of pancreatitis. And pancreatic cancer, th we are talking about the Butler data. It was a very small data of seven to 10 patients. And mind you, one patient who was not having diabetes also showed those nestling of cells, those nestling of eyes, eyelid nests, which he was showing that they are carcinogenic. So the data is not sufficient, and we should see the known, the known, and the known unknown, and we should discriminate. And we don't see the, those kind of things, and the signals are not very clear. So the flip sides are many drugs cause angioedema, minor and rare and easily manageable. And I will, I think majority of us will agree, at least I have not seen a single case till date. And rhinopharyngitis is a very rare and manageable complication. Should we fear gliptin? The answer is clearly no. We should not fear gliptin. And the individualized approach is there. Avoid, it avoids hypoglycemia. Again, it avoids weight gain, and again, you know ki it is safe with respect to cardiovascular outcome. And with respect to, again, in chronic kidney disease, people have shown the data, it is safe, and there are some glyptons where you need to reduce the dose. 
And there's one more thing. You start leptin as a whole, as one drug. You, you need not titrate it. So this is something very extraordinary about the molecule. Sulfonylurea, you go by one, two, three, four milligram of metformin, glimepiride, or lot many other drugs. That titration effect is also not there. And so when you see this, so you should go emotional. And uh, apart from this Karan Arjun, you may uh, remember Rakhi weeping, ki mere Karan Arjun ka baayenge. So in the modern era, I will say ki Karan Arjun ka baayenge nahi, Arjun hi lautega, Karan ka jamana ab ja chuka hai. So this is again, you should not get emotional about things, but the current wisdom is saying ki it is an era of Arjun. And our people live in our hearts. And they should get the best. I'm talking about this heart. They should get the best and try to bring out something, try to go for, the research should be di directed towards bringing out the Indian molecules, the cheaper molecules, go for the patents, go for the indents, make it cheaper and affordable to all of us. Thank you.